So in this video, I'm going to show you five niches that are about to spike in popularity massively in the next few weeks and coming months leading up until Christmas. When I say spike in popularity, what I mean is there's going to be more and more people basically looking to buy products within these niches. So if you're currently watching this video, struggling to find that one product to commit to and then capitalize on Q4, then I highly recommend focusing your attention and looking for products within the niches in this video. As always with these recommendation videos, all the niches that I suggest are going to be backed up by proven information and experience. Presentation that I go through that contains the links to the niches, to the products and all the data is gonna be downloadable for free. Like always, if we can get this video to 100 likes, I'll post the link in the pinned comment at the top of this video. So niche number one is probably the obvious one that everybody's thinking, which is of course, kids, toys and games. However, when you put kids toys and games into AliExpress, you're gonna be hit with hundreds of thousands of products. So here's some guidelines to kind of stick to when doing your research in this particular niche. So point number one is kids toys are pretty much guaranteed to sell. Christmas at the end of the day is for kids. Um, it's kind of like a weird thing that when you grow up, when you hit about sort of 14, 15, then you stop really caring about the presents you get at Christmas. Or certainly when you hit my age, then it becomes more about the food and seeing your family than it does the actual gifts you get. Christmas is definitely for the children um, and not for adults. Number two, kids toys and games as a niche is just about to spike in popularity. Let's take a look at the Google Trends info and I can just prove this to you. So this is the kids toys search term worldwide 2004 to present. And if I just scroll my cursor through the graph, we can see September in 2011. We can see September in 2012. We can see September 2013, so on and so forth. You pretty much get the idea. So just as we come towards the end of August now, September is basically when parents are gonna start looking for these particular toys, these particular games, these particular gifts for their kids. Um, to wrap them up and give them to them for Christmas basically. So now is the perfect time to start looking for products, build a site around it and start advertising. Going back to the point of, as it says here in brackets, if you have the right product and then jump in for to point four, um, think what's popular and or educational. So just a quick short story for you guys. I used to work for Sainsbury Supermarket about um, maybe six or seven years ago, maybe even eight years ago now, um, I used to stack shelves on the produce section and it was always next to the home section, which is basically where the home stuff was, things like toys, things like that. Um, once a year, they would run a promotion. I think they still do it today. Um, and it's basically three for two on toys. The night before, they'd pay people to stay in longer and just stack the shelves as high as possible full of toys, knowing that half an hour before entry, an hour before entry, before opening times the day before, parents would queue so they could come in and take advantage of this offer. Three for two for every three toys you buy, you get the cheapest one free. And every day they would always sell out. And the first kind of category of toys if you like to go was always what was popular that year and um, which we can't take advantage of because it was things like Frozen, um, I think when I was there it was Minions that was really popular, Avatar, things like that, obviously branded stuff we can't take advantage of but then number two always was the educational toys. So when you're trying to find products within the toys and games niche always think educational and always try and think tech as well. Um, at least to my knowledge, kids nowadays don't so much use coloring books, they use iPads um, and actually coloring on an iPad. But next best thing, not every family can afford an iPad, they're bloody expensive. You can get cheap little gadgets and tablets like this one on screen now. Again, this will provide the link to it, which will take you to AliExpress and the actual listing. So, and that's it for niche number one, kids toys and games. Niche number two, Halloween costumes and masks. This is one that cannot be ignored but again, you need to approach it with caution. So number one, the obvious one is you must use fast shipping. If you can't find a product that you can get to your customer in a week, then a lot of your order is gonna be arriving after Halloween, which is obviously gonna to lead to a lot of refunds. My recommendation would be to build a one product store slash niche store around Halloween costumes or one particular mask, if it's a really good mask. The reason being is because they'll look out of place on a generic kind of general store. They won't look as high quality, they won't look as good, it won't look as professional, it won't look as cool basically. Build a store around the Halloween niche um, or around a specific product and it will definitely help um, with your conversion rates. Let's take a look at the Google Trends info then. If we jump into this, once it loads up, so just a simple search term of Halloween worldwide 2004 to present, we can, it's pretty obvious, we can see throughout the year it's dead. There's not even enough information for Google, for Google, for Google to collect, 
But then July, people start thinking about it. August, people are thinking about it even more. September, even more. And then of course, October, when it actually happens, um, spikes massively in popularity. So now is definitely a great time to start thinking about it, finding products, get a store up, get some really cool c content, approach some influencers, so on and so forth. Um, and then start selling. Point number four, combine interests slash what's popular. So these masks, you've probably seen them before. I think they were popular maybe two or three years ago and it was around a certain movie, a certain film. So what you can do is find a product that is similar in this case and then combine it with the interests. So essentially, if you were selling this mask, you can see on screen now, you would obviously have your generic interests of Halloween and Halloween related interests, but then you can narrow it down with the actual film itself. So therefore you're targeting people who have an interest in Halloween and also an interest in that film. They've seen the film and in that way, people are gonna definitely more likely to notice it and definitely therefore um, more likely to buy it. A word of caution though, point number five, stay away from different sizes, universal fits only. If you're selling costumes, for example, that come in small, medium, large, or all the different female sizes, so on and so forth, and somebody has to send it back to you, then you have to resend another one. Chances are you're not gonna have time to do this, plus it's just a hassle. Um, so in my opinion, stay to universal fit. And then if somebody says it doesn't fit, then yes, they will have to return it, but at least then you don't have to do exchanges. Niche number three is LED products. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know um, I'm a really big fan of the LED products niche. This is because I've made a lot of money in it, selling a lot of different products from lots of different niches. So the obvious one is it's darker for longer during winter months, especially here in the UK. Um, once the solstice happens, and the clocks change and essentially it's gonna be dark from sort of like 4 p.m. which means you've got all that time in which people are gonna be going about their lives in the dark and this brings us skipping ahead to point number four is to think about what kind of activities people will have to do in the dark. They'll be forced to do in the dark. They'll be forced to exercise if they go running after work and they'll be forced to commute if they go on a bike, so think bike lights. They'll be forced to actually work themselves. This is a really cool product. Hopefully it's big enough for you guys to see, but it's basically like a little bit of material, almost like a glove that you put on your hand, and it's got two torches on it. So think electricians working outside in the dark, or think people who work on hot tubs, or think people who do DIY and they have no light, or they're working outside basically where it's difficult to see what you're doing. And then last but not least, it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't mention walking dogs in the dark, LED collars, LED leads, anything to do with keeping your dog safe, trust me, it's just a guaranteed winner if you have the right product. What worked four or five years ago, the LED co collars I used to sell five years ago are not the same ones I sell today because they just don't sell. And then again, to finish off with a word of warning, it must be rechargeable. Um, when I started selling dog collars all those years ago, um, lots of people complained about the fact they weren't rechargeable. Same with the bike lights too. I sell quite a few different bike lights and unless they're rechargeable, people just aren't interested because people tend to be more environmentally friendly minded. Um, so just make sure basically any LED products that you sell must be rechargeable. Niche number four is jewelry. So jewelry is one of the most popular gifts given at Christmas between the older generations. I consider myself an old generation, by the way. Um, and the most popular for jewelry is for somebody to buy for a loved one. So obviously a partner, a granddaughter, or pet jewelry, believe it or not, also does really well during Christmas too, because my girlfriend will buy me a present from our dog. And because she does that, then obviously I have to do vice versa too. So I'll get her a present from the dog. And it could be just a silly little cheap stainless steel bracelet that says to mummy from Enzo, our dog. But at the end of the day, it's still jewelry, it's still a gift, and it's still something people are gonna be buying. If we take a look at the Google's Trends Info too, let's open this up. So again, backed up by real life data and information. We can see that the jewelry niche worldwide 2004 to present. So August, people are kind of thinking about it. September, they're thinking about it even more. October, even more. And then November and December times. So this repeats throughout the year. More and more people are looking to buy jewelry coming up to Christmas. The fourth and final point is to don't sell your jewelry on a general store, go niche slash one product. It looks too cheap, it looks too tacky. If you're trying to sell, say, a 100 pound ring or a 100 pound bracelet next to a 10, 20 pound dog collar, it just doesn't work. Make sure that the type of jewelry you're selling 
matches the theme and feel and look of your store. This product on screen here is a proven half million dollar product. If it featured on one of my videos a few weeks ago, um, somebody sold this product and made over half a million dollars selling it on TikTok and using influencers on TikTok. So if you want a product idea, this is definitely a great product that I would put a lot of money on um, selling really well during the Q4 months. And then last but certainly not least, we have the fitness and health niche. Now this is a bit of a cheat, but in a way it's not. So number one, the reason it's not, I guess, is it's the most popular niche from January, hands down. Let's jump into the Google Trends info just to confirm this. So we have Jim, United Kingdom 2004 to present, and we can see actually since 2010, it's increased in popularity. It doesn't just hit the same rate, it actually goes through that and keeps increasing. Basically what this means is there's more and more people that are becoming health conscious. There's more and more people looking for a gym basically. So in 2010, there was less people going to the gym than there was in 2018. Now, excuse, excuse, ignore this kind of period here. This is where COVID hit. So people were obviously not going to the gyms because they were closed, so ignore this. But if history was to repeat itself when things get back to normal, then it's gonna go above and beyond that of 2017, 2018, so on and so forth. Basically what I'm trying to say, when January hits, the number one New Year's resolution is to get fit, lose weight, get in shape. So take advantage of that. Think of some products you can sell. So for example, on screen now, there's these, um, I, was, I was about to say heated, but they're not, they're kind of like woolly leggings. Again, a proven seven figure products. These are pretty much guaranteed to sell. Um, and the reason they do so well is because there's more and more people looking for leggings. In fact, if we jump into Google Trends and just put leggings in now and double check this, um, we can see from about the end of August, July, September, November time, more and more people are looking for leggings because it's cold. Um, they're interested in the gym, so why not combine two of those things um, and get warm leggings? Point number three is to match the product to your platform. As an example, Facebook's average users are in the 35 um, kind of years old age range and above, and they're also female too. So for a product like this would be brilliant because it matches that kind of demographic. But if you're trying to sell a product that's aimed at a teenager, 18, 19, 20, then Facebook is probably not gonna be your best bet. And I would suggest looking at Instagram or TikTok. So the reason fitness and health is featured in this Q4 list is because you need to start preparation for this now. There's a lot that needs to go into a fitness and health store to make it viable, to make it believable, and basically make people want to buy from you. And here are some of those things and the reasons why you need to do this now. It's quite time consuming. So number one is content from influencers. If you use app creation services like Bilio, where it's actually real user generated content, the whole process takes about three to four weeks because you need to find the person, you need to kind of confirm them, be happy with them, send them your products that could take two weeks. They need to then produce a video which then could take two weeks and then they need to send it to you and send the product back and so on and so forth. So start preparation for all this now is definitely a good idea. Number two is branding. It takes a lot of time to put together a decent brand, the ideas and what you want to call it basically, get a really decent logo, put your store together. All of this can take two, three weeks on its own. And then of course, you need to quality test the products too. You need to get them delivered to yourself. Ideally, you need to wear them yourself um, and see how long they last. If it's something like leggings or depending on what the product is, of course, you just need to apply the right kind of testing and amount of testing to make sure it's a good product. And with that being said, guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up there if that's okay. Um, I feel like I've been talking for a while. Hopefully I've put my argument across of why these niches are indeed good niches. So as I mentioned in the intro, I definitely recommend focusing your attention within these niches and trying to find products within them. If you do find any really good products and this video helps you out, um, please do make sure you hit that like button. If we can get this video to 100 likes, I'll release the link for this presentation so everybody can download it for free. One final quick message then before you go, if you are looking for a course to take you from scratch from day one as a complete beginner and take you through the whole process you need to go through step by step to the point where you have a fully functioning um, drop shipping business make sure you check out my ecom academy there's a new course coming out october 1st there will be the it'll be the top link sorry um, in the video link above in the video link in the video description above <laughs> thanks again for watching um, and i'll see you guys in the next video